Imagine sitting in front of your screen at 2 a.m., the coffee's gone cold, your desk is covered in scribbled notes, and you're staring at your latest prototype again. You move your character around the screen, test your newest mechanic, but something feels off. It's not fun. And worse, you have no idea why. This was me. Over and over again, for two long years, my games consistently felt messy, confusing, and disappointing. But recently, during a game jam, I was forced to do something I'd always avoided. Something I thought would slow me down. Instead, it completely transformed how I design my games. Today, I want to talk about the best tool for making better games that I ignored for far too long. My old workflow was straightforward. Think of an idea, jump straight into prototyping, hope that fun emerges naturally. It seemed creative at first, but eventually it felt more like gambling. Jonas Tyroller, creator of Will You Snail, described it perfectly. I had one idea, made the game immediately, and honestly, that was stupid. It's like playing Russian roulette. You're just hoping it works. That described my exact problem. I relied purely on luck. Something had to change. I joined the Pirate Game Jam, eager to dive straight into coding, but then I stopped dead in my tracks. I stuck on a single sentence from the jam rules. Your submission must include a game design document. My stomach dropped, my immediate thought, you're kidding me, I'm about to waste precious jam hours typing up paperwork? Reluctantly, I opened a blank document and started writing. At first it felt slow, almost painfully so, but as the page filled, something changed. I started by listing my inspirations, Into the Breach, Slay the Spire, and then something unexpected happened. Ideas that previously floated randomly in my head began snapping into place, forming a clear, cohesive image. The more I wrote, the clearer my game became. Suddenly, the core of my game, The Blood is Mana, a tactical roguelike deck builder where your health isn't just a number, it's your resource, felt vivid exciting, and surprisingly, intuitive. Documenting this unique mechanic forced me to answer important questions early. Which mechanics directly supported this idea, and which features distracted or diluted my vision? Matt Thorson, developer of Celeste, described something similar. Celeste worked because we started small, identified exactly what felt good, and cut everything else. Clearly documenting my core mechanic early helped me identify what felt good and cut everything else out, making the game design intentional and cohesive. I described clearly in the document that players would navigate tactical challenges on a single screen isometric board, controlling their characters entirely through their deck of cards. The game wasn't about fast action, it was about carefully optimizing decks, managing resources, and learning enemy behaviors through repeated runs. Clearly defining the player experience up front made it easier to communicate mechanics intuitively through gameplay, something I had struggled with before. The judge at Pirate Game Jam recognized this, specifically noting in the feedback later saying, The Blood is Mana does a very good job teaching mechanics through discovery. Planning deliberately through the GDD didn't just help me build mechanics, it allowed me to design a meaningful player experience. My GDD also forced me to clearly define exactly who my game was for, something I thought of before, but having it written down added more commitment to this idea. In the document, I explicitly described my audience as Players who enjoy strategic challenges, who find satisfaction in carefully planning combos and critically thinking about every move. This clarity let me design intentionally. Instead of random flashy features, I prioritized mechanics and content specifically tailored to strategic-minded players, like the fans of games like Into the Breach and Slay the Spire. Going back to the inspiration from earlier, Clearly knowing my target audience allowed me to build exactly the game they'd love, something I had never done so intentionally before. Another surprising benefit of writing a game design document was how much it improved my art direction. As a solo developer, I often chose visuals intuitively, often randomly, 
Now with a clear plan, I defined a deliberate color palette, warm reds for my main character, the Blood Mage, sharply contrasted against cool colored backgrounds. Team Cherry, creators of Hollow Knight, highlighted a similar lesson. They said, we originally had far more mechanics and visuals planned, but cutting down to what felt best improved everything, including visuals. Suddenly, my visuals felt intentional, unified, and professional, thanks to early planning. Now, did this intentional planning through a GDD truly make a difference? I personally felt it, but the clearest validation came from the Game Jam judge who wrote, The Blood is Mana was a very interesting deck builder and turn-based tactics game. I found the game loop interesting as it was and would look forward to the implementation of relics in the future. I found all enemies encounter to be interesting in their different patterns of behavior as well as in their visual styles. Ultimately, the game design document didn't just improve my game, it helped others clearly understand and appreciate what made it unique. Does this mean every indie developer absolutely needs a game design document? Not necessarily, but here's the real lesson. 1. Planning isn't paperwork, it's clarity. 2. Good game design isn't guesswork, it's deliberate choices. And lastly, clearly defining your core mechanics, player experience, and audience dramatically improves your game. If your games feel unclear or unfocused, consider taking a moment to slow down and clearly write your ideas down. Because clarity might just be the best tool you've ignored. If this devlog helped you think differently about game design and you would like to see more contents like this, please consider supporting the channel by sharing and subscribing. Thanks for watching.